Welcome back. This is the second in a three-part series of caddis flies we're doing. This one's, uh, the first one was the, what we consider to be the, the simplest of all, the X caddis. And the X caddis, I mean, it hunts like a champ, love the fly, but there's, I, I just, when you look at a caddis, it, it's a little tube and out the hind end you'll see this V, this little tiny V out the back and that's the wing when it sits back there. And so it kind of always bothered me that the wing on an X and an elk hair was forward and all of it went like this. They all catch fish like a champ so it doesn't really matter. But um, And I, I had a little problem with those flies sinking on me so I, well the X and so I changed it just a little bit. It took a little piece of this and a little piece of that uh, and just added it. And this is called the double wing caddis. So it's basically the same thing, it's just we put two wings on. And, and the front one's for flotation in the front of the body. And, and like I said, if you look at an actual uh, underwater, if you look at a, a caddis, it's just this little tube, like kind of tapered. You barely see the legs, but you see that V. And so what I wanted to accomplish here is I'm still going to have a little, a little short shuck, but I'm going to have a mid wing and then a second wing. And for Jeremy and I, I asked Jeremy that this morning or this afternoon, I mean, you know, I, how much he fished the double wing last year. And he said the same thing. I, and it's the only, it's the only caddis I've fished and actually it's been two years for me. And he said it was the only thing he fished last year too. And it just, it's so durable. It's so simple. Now I, I said before on the, on the first one, uh, the X-Cat is super easy to start a kid on or anybody starting to tie because you really can't screw it up too much. This one's just a little tiny bit more complicated, very little, just but you got to put two wings on, it's the only difference. So anyway, we're going to start with a, uh, the hooks again, and it's the same hooks as the, as the x caddis. We're going to have a TMC 100 <clears throat> or... And, and, and this is just any standard, uh, any standard dry fly hook. You're gonna, we're going to tie them on 14s, but it's a, I, I've got a 100 and an 1180 over here. And either, but whatever dry fly hook, there's a, there's a lot of hooks out there. But, you know, I, I tied on the TMC. This was, that's one hook that I tied on a long time. And then I went into the Daiichis and I kind of back and forth. They're, they're pretty even for me. Just like micro barbs, nice gap. Uh, then we're going to go to the Bobby, ba, Bobby. We're going to go to the body. That's a uh, super fine. I use super fine for everything in dry fly world. I don't use. I mean, it's just I've been using it since uh, I, I think way back in the 70s when uh, when it wasn't even super fine when it was another one. But it's a really cool. You can. I, I love these boxes. I said that in the last one. I'll say it in the other ones too. You just get so many colors. Super simple to use. Every one of those little uh, boxes. Every one of those little things is a full full bag of uh, dubbing. So then for the tail, I'm gonna use Z yarn, nothing, same one I used on the other, uh, on any of them. And I'm using this kind of, this is an olive brown, but I like kind of a, if you've got an ambery, you know, that's kind of up to you. you, you whatever color shuck you like to see. And then lastly is gonna be the hair. Uh, and, and I said this on the last one, if you've got X, and I, I, I only, I, I, that's not true. I personally get my own hair because I, I get it in big quantities uh, be, before I knew of this company. This is Nature Spirit. I think they're the best company. When it comes to short fine deer hair, there, there's nobody in these people's league. Joel, the owner, it, it's just, he understands fly tying. He knows how to, he knows how to select it. It's unbelievable. And so there's X, which is specifically to the caddis, I suppose. But there's also Comparadon hair. If you have either of these, they are going to be in the short fine, uh, meaning that it's the hair is the same length, really consistent, and it's made for this kind of fly. So, and I and I don't do that very often. Say one company over other company, but in this particular, this is the hair. You know, you you want this company's hair until somebody can come along and do what he does. And so, as I said in the other one, for those of you that are over 40. Uh, you can go to the bleached hair. The bleached hair, uh, and I do this on a lot of my own. It ha I have not seen any bearing on the fish take, uh, but you can see it better, right? And so this is your traditional, this is a piece of X caddis hair, and this is a piece of bleached. <clears throat> Either one will work. It's just, if, if you're having trouble seeing it, put that on. All right, so 
I'm gonna, oh, and the last thing, uh, Semperfly, 12 watt nano silk. Uh, you could use the olive, I'm using brown, you can use whatever you want. The body's, <clears throat> the body's olive brown, so it wouldn't really matter. So, to start this, I'm gonna do this a little different than I do, than I do normally. When I tell you to start the thread, I usually tell you to start, leave a head's width. That one's not gonna work on this because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I want you to see where your middle wing goes. And so I want you to start your thread dead center in the hook, right there, right here. We're gonna come through. Got a lot of phones ringing here. What's going on around this place? And so I want you to start right here so that we have something to see where we're gonna put our wing. So, you know, not just guessing. If you screw up, it's not gonna, it's, it's not that big a deal. So, I'm gonna take the Zilon Shuck, and unlike the x caddis where I use the length of the body, I shorten on the, on the double wing, I shorten it. And I, I, you know, just, I just make it a little bit smaller. I'll show you here in a second. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this forward just so it's nice and tight. I'm gonna wrap it right behind the, right behind where we're gonna put our wing. And about, I'm, I'm gonna do about 20% of the overall body for the shuck, and that's about where that is. So I go in and just kind of judge it. You make sure when, and I didn't say this on the X caddis, make sure when you cut this, you don't stretch it. If you're using crinkly Zilon, if you're using straight, it won't matter, but the crinkly, if you pull on it, and cut it, it's gonna bounce back, it'll be shorter than you wanted it. So just pull it out so you can see where you want it. That's about where I want that one. You know, you can see it's about half as long as I do the x caps. So, back we go here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this, just in case you didn't see the other one. When we dub, when you start with dubbing, especially on your dry flies, dubbing does not float it simply doesn't absorb water. And so the tighter your dubbing is on this hook, or on your thread, excuse me, and you, the, the, the tighter that is around there, less water absorb. You're gonna put a floating on it, and that just stops it from letting it absorb, but it's still going to migrate sooner or later. If your body's loose, your fly is gonna sink twice as fast. So when you take this stuff out of the container, you're gonna come in here, I've said this in every video I've ever done with dubbing, when you pick it out and it's nice and loose, and I'm sure you can't see that, but it's right there, it's kind of floaty. But if it's too much and you let it go, it'll drop. If it drops like it just did right there, you got way too much. So ideally what you're trying to do is, these are little tiny fibers, right? You're trying to twist it. You're gonna, you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna just go just like that and you're gonna rub it around so it wraps around. And ideally, every single fiber wraps individually around the hook. What you don't want to end up with is a big gob on the, in one spot and a smaller one here. And so to stop that, you're just going to do a few little turns right here. You're going to start. Hey, hello. Come here. What are you doing? There's a dog here. We haven't had a cameo by this one in a long time. There it is. This is Ellie, for those of you. This is the new puppy after Belly. Yeah, I see you too. All right, beat it. <clears throat> dog cameos, they say they sell videos. <clears throat> I haven't seen that. Most people just complain about them. Not really. Okay, so I'm going around this thread, wrapping that nice and tight. See how it's, I'm not looking for a lot of build. That's a really common mistake when you first start tying because like I said in the other video, your first inkling when you start to tie flies is you want to fill a fly box up immediately. And, and everybody does it. So you want a fly that's pretty simple when you do this, but you don't want to do it wrong and have half those flies sink. So on this one, we're going to, it's a quick fly, nice and tight body. And just like with everything we do in fly tying, everything's a taper. So there I've got to my halfway point. I'm going to take my short fine deer here. And this one, this is the wing that will float your fly. And we're going to clean this out. Even though it's short fine and it's super quality hair, you still gotta get the stuff out of there. If it's, you know, you'll, you'll know. If it has any of that under fur, it's gotta go. And like I've said in a lot of these things, 
this is this is the swing stacker there's four sizes of this thing and this is my favorite the tiny one the the the, the small mini small small we read we had two names we got the small this is a large the i can stack hair in a lot of stackers but when it comes to this short fine stuff it's usually on some of the normal stackers obviously you can see it down here it would go down and fall out and the same thing happens on some of the tube stackers on this one it's made you can see anything you can see it there i'll sure turn it around in case we couldn't see it but you can see i've got like a quarter of an inch so i can put this really small hair hold your thumb over it and stack it and i can see it that it just makes all the difference in the world because i'm not looking at the you know guessing when i pull the tube out and hoping it's on the side so because people are always asking me what you know what's your favorite one it's you know, or the one that I should have, and it's, if you tell I small flies, that's the one. So this one's going to go, I'm going to come in here, and I want this wing to go to the length of the shuck. I want it to go just over, you can see I'm barely over the shuck right there. So when I tie it in, it's going to flare up a little bit, and it'll, it'll give me that V that I was talking about before when you look at a caddis from the underside. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to test it, look where everything is, I'm going to switch hands, I'm going to cut this really close. You're going to spin your thread to your right <clears throat> so that when you do that, watch what the thread does. See how it lays back over like that? I don't have to fight it. If, it's, if you twist it the other direction, counterclockwise, it'll lean forward. But this is just a technique so that you don't fight this hair. I'm going to come in here and catch just as little as possible. All right, one, two, pull straight down. See how tiny that head is right there? Just go right through it. Just come through, make sure that thing's nice and tight, and there's my wing. Now we're gonna duplicate. We're gonna dub again, just a little bit at a time. Never rush this. It's hard to tell beginning tires not to rush, or anybody for that matter. I've done thousands of tying seminars, and I say it to everybody, enjoy the process. So I'm just, and if I'm going to just enough, nice and tight, see how tight that body is? There's just, nothing's moving. So pick up your wing, make sure you don't have any hairs and go right over top of that. Before you race forward, make sure that you covered it up. Just get a, get a nice clean body. I come back over this just till I get it built up. You can't do that in one step. You've, you've kind of got to stair step it back and forth so you get that the body's nice and tight. And this is, that's where you can go when you're trying to cover that little tiny bit of hair that was stuck up from when you trimmed when you put your wing in. Okay, nice and tight. I go back so I'm just trying to clean this up just a little bit making sure I don't like that I didn't quite get enough right in front of that right there see that how it bumped off that now I'm nice and clean I just want to I don't want I don't want this to be completely I don't want the hook to be bare but I don't want it to be super thick because I'm going to put this wing on just like we did on the X caddis we're gonna put this wing on so I want I want a little bit of build I think it sets on that a little bit better now we're gonna take the second one <clears throat> same thing as the first one but this one we're gonna do with the elk hair caddis style head and I said it I've said it in a lot a lot of videos when you do an elk hair caddis, you should never, ever trim these things. And that's the way, when you see, I've never seen somebody do it the other way. They, you put it, usually you see them put it on and they'll start clipping on it and, you know, clipping this and clipping that. And what ends up happening when you do that, right up at the front, usually that's where you're going to have, you're going to tight, you know, you cut. And they'll work back towards the thread and end up with a lot of places where there isn't any hair at all. When we do it this way, we're going to set it just like we do a collar on a streamer. And when you tie it in, instead of having to clip it, you're going to cut all them the same length. We put our thread around it. We're going to tighten down. We're going to make this 
bulbous head. It's all, every hair will be exactly the same length <clears throat> and you'll build some buoyancy into the fly. I mean, that's the whole point of this thing. Otherwise, there'd be no reason to have this hair sticking out because there's nothing on the caddis. I mean, they don't have a bulbous head. Their, their heads are, they go right down to a taper and there's really nothing to it. So it really doesn't have the head, but this adds a little flotation to the fly. And this particular fly is, is as flies go, it's virtually impossible to sink. I mean, because of the, you've got the tails, the tips of the hair back here that are setting up and it's gonna, hook's gonna go through the water surface, you know, through the meniscus, break through, and then that shuck in this hair back here is gonna stop its hind end from going down. Then this one's gonna be up front. We're gonna layer this halfway over this one. And that's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna, it's gonna increase your buoyancy, but we don't want it to show so much. We don't want it nice and thick. We want it kind of thin laying right over the other wing, but we want the head to help absorb the impact. So we're gonna take this, <clears throat> we're gonna cut it in a nice straight line. I got a little bit of bulbous there. I want to recheck that. So what I'm to, I, I forgot to say this. When you come in here, you're gonna you're gonna touch your your finger and your thumb against the eye of the hook. Don't go over top of it. Kind of get right here and layer it so it's halfway down the other wing. Check it, and then you're gonna switch so you can see where to tie it in, and then you're gonna make this really clean cut so it's nice and square like that. Now you're gonna come in here and you're gonna you've thread spun. And I'm a little bit, I want to come back just a little bit. I'm going to put this so we can see it's right over the eye of the hook. So the hair's touching the eye at the end of the hook. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go one, two, pull straight down. Now I got that little furry little head. Get off of there. It only takes two. You don't need you do, two turns, pull straight down. Go right immediately to the front and you're done. Could have called this the hedgehog. That name's been taken. Uh, <clears> There's <throat> a sunk caddis or something like that. So come in here now and just double check that you didn't roll any hair. I had a couple hairs roll over there while I was chattering it up. So, but you, what you can see is all these hairs are the same length. I don't want it huge. I don't want it wide because I don't want to have this big gob ahead. So I look underneath it, it's not much wider than the rest of it. But what you've got, you've got a shuck, a double wing. So when you look at it from the back, a little bit of that hair sticking back gives you that silhouette of what might be the wing hanging out the back. You got this nice little round head for flotation and it's gonna float way better than any other fly you've got, I guarantee you, because all this hair, it's virtually impossible. That hair's hollow. And so it's virtually impossible to sink this fly. It's got a really, we'll show you, we'll flip it around here. Just go underneath and look and make sure you don't have any crazy hairs anywhere. And just trim them off if you've got one or, one or two there. But when you get done, when you're looking from the bottom, you shouldn't see so much up here as you see it back there. This fly truly, truly hunts, almost impossible to sink. And man, you can't get a fly that's more durable. There's nothing to break on it. So it, they, they really go a long ways. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.